Good morning world from Coco Frio Chargal. We're getting ourselves a lovely bit of breakfast at this beautiful little cafe in General Luna. What do we have today? What a great breakfast this is. Look, okay. coconut ice cream. <laughs> made. I've also ordered my new favourite drink, the coconut banana freeze, which is being made for us right now. This right here deserves a feature all on its own. My favourite drink at the moment. You've got the coconut meat blended in, you've got really nice coffee and also a blended banana in there. It's kind of like a Vietnamese coffee, isn't it? Yeah. But better. Yeah. Much better. Coconut milk as well. Are you going to stir it or are you just going to go straight in? I'm going to go straight in, I think. When you drink it with a straw, you get pure coffee at the bottom. And then as you raise your straw up, you get the banana and then the coconut sweetness. <laughs> All right, we have to go and pick Story up now actually. Yeah. But we have some coconut water in here. They do coconut water to go, you bring your own container. What was the total bill? It was 440 pesos All for right. everything. Right, we have just arrived to pick Story up from school down there. I can see her coming now. My guess is we're gonna have a very muddy Story because it's been really rainy. Look at those stormy clouds up there. Big muddy puddles down there and I just heard big thunder as well so i think we're gonna have some more rain any second now here she comes hi coco i see stories in her change of clothes which means she got covered in mud oh harry well noisy he's sliding down the hill <laughs> i've been calling this doggy wrong it's not coco it's hero, it's hero the dog. whoops we're just watering the kids. Eden's gonna chill out here under the shade. Story's drinking her coconut water from the Coco Frio place this morning. And we are going to Isla Cocina to get some pizza. This is something that has been really good all over the island, is the quality of pizza here. I really do feel like Filipinos know how to make a good pizza. Salama. This is a really nice restaurant. Look at this, it's a proper wood-fired oven. Excellent. That's how you know the pizza is going to be good. This would be a good place to like come and celebrate an anniversary, have a birthday or something. Really nice in here. Here's the menu. Different kind of foods you can get here. They've even got truffle fries. Look at that fire burning, getting ready for our pizzas to go in. Look at this, I can see a bit of sunshine now and some food has arrived. This is our focaccia from the pizza oven. Look at that. Look how perfect that looks. Is it warm? Yeah. <laughs> How's it taste? Good. Let's give you a little close-up of this. Yeah, crack in. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Story is already diving in. It comes with balsamic vinegar and some olive oil as well. Which Story will be very happy about because she loves this European style eating. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea to watch this video if you're feeling hungry. Look at that texture inside that bread. What's on top of the bread? Rosemary. There's rosemary on top of the bread. Mm. Nice. Oh look, yum, there you go. Salama, wow, look at this. Look at this pizza. Um, yes please. Yeah, Tabasco sauce would go nicely. Look at those fresh leaves on the top. It's quite rare to find these kind of rocket leaves here. Well, they call it arugula, don't they? American say arugula. Oh, you're trying to blend it. Maybe use a spoon. Oh, that's good. It's going to taste nice, isn't it? Yeah, you little mixologist. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Mm. Yeah. Just try it with the bread. So this pizza is called the Garden Special. It's like the vegetarian pizza. We asked for no cheese, so we made it vegan. But look at this crust. Just look at that. That is so good. So good. I'm ruining it all. <laughs> <laughs> They're your pieces. <laughs> all these ones here. Them. Yeah, all mine. Yeah? It smells amazing. You like that? It's good, isn't it? Nice and fresh. You can do a basil leaf test, yeah? I'll have one, you have one. What do you think? It's good, isn't it? Do you like basil or rocket better? It's better. Do you like that one better? Yeah. Story's leaf review. Yeah. It's funny, actually, on the way to this morning she was actually asking what rocket was wasn't she yeah a little farm. we went past the organics farm yeah. and she said what's rocket leaves and what are arugula leaves and now we've got it on our pizza it's great that we can get that kind of stuff here 
that wood fired pizza was absolutely amazing. Sasha and I agree that it's probably the best pizza that you can get in general Luna at least. The total bill for the food that we got at Isla Cuisina was 550 pesos. And what's good about that place is that it's not even an Italian restaurant and yet the quality of the pizza was international standard. Yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? It was really nice. Amazing base, just the crispiness, everything about it was perfect. I think you could see from how it looks on camera, it tastes how it looks. Yeah, we had clean plates all around, there wasn't a crumb left. <laughs> yeah, even the quality of the olive oil and the vinegar was like what we would expect from when we were living in Europe as well, isn't it? Yeah, nice, really good. So we've just stopped off at our favorite panda cocoa place in the whole island. These guys do the best panda cocoa. It's a Filipino bread bun which has coconut meat inside, a little bit of sugar. It's not too sweet, it's very bready. Best panda cocos on the island. Yeah, how many did you get? 10 pieces, mm. buy in bulk. <laughs> help the local community, help me. That's a relish one. That's a lovely one, try it. Is it yummy? <laughs> Is that the face of satisfaction? And you can taste the coconut charcoal on the outside. These ladies outside the church are the best at making them. And it's a vegan roll, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and they're only five pesos each. So exactly. it's a right bargain. <laughs> yeah, so if you're coming here and you're on a budget and you want to fill your tummy, Really, you can get so much for your money here and they're so good. If you're in the GL area, look out for this bright yellow church and this basketball court. There's normally people playing outside and then right here in front, you could just park your car by the side of the road. You could even do it drive through style, can't you? Yeah, we have done that a few times and they kind of start firing up the coconuts in the morning because when we drop Story off at school about 8, 8.30, they're not cooking yet. They're just like kind of getting the coals ready to yeah. start toasting up the buns. So you have to come a little bit later in the morning. About 9 o'clock I would say they'll be ready to start serving. Yeah. And then they're really hot and fresh. So nice. Freshly cooked all day. It's a new morning here in the Philippines and we are out for breakfast. Today we're going to get a Filipino breakfast but with a twist. Recently we showed you in the vlogs that this restaurant here, Veja, has opened up and they do 100% vegan Carandera food. Well today they have opened their breakfast menu and on that breakfast menu they have something called a tapa. Now this is actually a dish that I had before years ago when I wasn't vegan and it was made with beef. This is a full vegan version so everything on here on this menu is veganized so I'm going to get to have a traditional Filipino breakfast and also for people to just have a different take on how much meat you need to consume to see how it tastes. So on my plate today I have a ube latte and Sasha went for a beetroot rose latte. What milk was used today? Both oat milk. Nice yeah. and there's lots of different non-dairy milk options. Yeah, yeah, even macadamia. Yeah you don't often see macadamia milk do you? Yeah, really I've got these pretty dried flowers here for my Instagram shot. <laughs> I can go take a picture of it now. It's proper Instagram worthy isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh my breakfast has arrived. I'm really excited for this. Look at that, it's beautiful. This was the matcha, matcha cocoa granola bowl with the beetroot puree. It looks so yummy. It's amazing. The colours are really good. So this is the vegan beef tapa, looking very authentic with the meat there. When I had a beef tapa before, it had an egg on it, didn't it? So you'd have to try and find a way to make a vegan egg, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> look at the texture of it though, and look at the colour as well. How's that? Really nice. Yeah? Happy face. <laughs> this is the last dish that we ordered, the tocino. What do you think of that? Yeah? It's got like a sweetness, very different from the taco. Yeah? Yeah, it's nice. I've never seen this on a menu before either, so it's new for me. Eden is really enjoying the breeze down here. We're just hanging out, having a leisurely morning. We're gonna get some coffee now, aren't we? We were just talking with Chin, the owner of this place, and we also had a chat with the chef. And it's really interesting to get the details about the lengths that these guys go to to produce good food. And one thing that I have noticed about being here in the Philippines and the Philippines people is that there's an international influence there. People have gone 
to different parts of the world and they've taken the best of different countries and come back here and infused it into the Filipino food. Whether these guys are making international food like that pizza we had the other day or actual Filipino food that's been made vegan, the ideas for the ingredients come all over the place but most of the time they're locally sourced to make it fresher and the experience also comes from all over the place too which is what I like because they produce something really special. I like taking two good things from different places and mixing them together to make something special. I feel like that's part of who I am and that's why I like it here in the Philippines because you see elements of that everywhere especially in the food. One thing that I'm extremely happy about is that we're able to get amazing coffee on this island. Check this out, a cortado with oat milk. This is something that I would only dream about when we were living in Portugal. We'd have to go to the city of Lisbon or Porto to get anything like this, wouldn't we? Yep, and now we've got flat whites with extra shots and non-dairy milks. Fantastic. And baristas that know what they're doing. Little taste test. How is it? <laughs> Your eyes say it all. So we ended up spending quite a long time at breakfast, over two hours. Really nice experience though. The total bill for everything that we had, including all those coffees and coffee type drinks, was 1,300 pesos, which is just about 20 British pounds. But one thing is for sure, if you come to this island in particular, you're not going to be wanting for different types of food. I'm truly stuffed. <laughs> It was nice. We, we did order extra. We didn't need to get a third dish, but we wanted to film and show the different types of food. Yeah. And the kind of, the two rice dishes and then the smoothie bowl. The smoothie bowl was like our dessert. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked out nicely. We're gonna go pick up story now. I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.